Okay, for once, I'm just gonna go directly to the answer because I think that that's how you should approach this question is the answer is just obvious if we understand the vocab. They're talking about points where it crosses the x-axis at a0 and b0. And we know that when we have anything, whether it's a quadratic or a higher order function, that's what factoring gets us. And remember, when we factor, we're getting the terms kind of reversed. And then we have to solve for x and we flip the sign, you know, and so a is the answer here because a and b would look like a negative a and a negative b in the choice. That's it. Now, I could explain how factors work and all that stuff. Hopefully you just know that from doing like quadratics that if we have something like y equals x squared minus 7x plus 12, if we wanted to find the x-intercepts, we would set y equal to 0 and factor. So this would be x minus 3, x minus 4. And then what are the x-intercepts? Well, what we're supposed to do is set each of these factored forms, uh, factored terms in to equal 0, but we usually just take a little shortcut and we're like, oh, x is 3, x is 4. Because if we put 3 in for x or 4 in for x, it would make the term 0, and then that would make the whole thing 0 because it's all multiplication. So this is just like basic understanding of Algebra 2. Um, so it, it shouldn't be that much harder because they gave us letters instead of numbers. But we could always use one of my favorite strategies, plug points into equations. Because guess what? We've got points. We've got equations. If I put that point into each of these choices, it should work. So for, let's just try a zero. So zero would be my y, so that's my f of x equals a minus a, a minus b. Well, a minus b is a mess, can't do that, but a minus a I can do, and that's zero. Zero times a minus b is zero, so that checks out. And so we could do that for all the choices here. We can do it for b, and we're gonna see that we've got a problem, zero plus a, or sorry, a plus a, and a plus b, this is a mess. This is an algebraic mess. 2a times a plus b, we can just see that that's not going to be 0. Now c is where we have a little bit of a problem because it does still work. a minus a times a plus b, this is still 0. But what, what should we do? Well, we have another point. Try the other point. So in that case, it would be 0 equals b minus a, b plus b, and here we've got a problem. That stays weird, and this doesn't get any better, 2b. So that's the problem that we had kind of with, with the other point in choice b, is we need them to be minus. Hopefully we recognize that just in plugging them in, and even though it's going to kind of work in d, this is where things get a little bit more advanced, right? So if we plugged it into d, we'd have 0 is equal to a, a minus a, a minus b. So that does get me a zero, and it would work the same for the other choice. But here's the key word. Exactly two points. Meaning it only crosses the x-axis twice. What choice d has is three points, three crosses of the x-axis. One of them would be at a, one of them would be at b, and the other one right here would be at zero. When x is zero, this whole thing is zero too, so that causes a problem. So, look, I don't think plugging points into equations is the efficient way to do this. Like, it's just getting out of hand, there's a lot of stuff, it's kind of confusing, but it might help you understand why the short way works. We just need to understand these definitions. A factor is a term kind of in parentheses that gives us an x-intercept. And most of the time, the sign is flipped. So they're related ideas. They're very important for thinking about quadratics. But they work for all sorts of polynomials and functions. The idea of how a factor gives us an x-intercept, that's literally what this question is asking. It's a fundamental definition. So hopefully, I've at least refreshed your memory and you know it for next time.